Hello, welcome back to the channel. All right, so not too long ago, I did a video. It was maybe about three days ago um, or four days ago, whatever. Anyways, I did a video on why you should listen to Stephen Furtick. And so it was kind of a... Uh, you know, uh, I don't know why, you know, you, sh you know what, just don't. I figured I was going to get some feedback from people that love Stephen Furtick and uh, not necessarily on YouTube, but in person. And so they, I was asked a lot, you know, why I did a video like that. You know, hey, at least the, he's he's reaching out to the young younger generation and at least this young generation is going to church. But my question, my rebuttal was, what God are they worshiping? Because Stephen Furtick doesn't talk about the God of Scripture. He, sure, he has a Bible, but he's not pointing them to the Jesus of Scripture. He's not pointing them to the God of Scripture. Stephen Furtick has become the most dangerous wolf in a shepherd's clothing. Yes, he is a gifted speaker. I'll give you that. Yes, he has this charisma. Ah, fine, I get that. But when it comes to Scripture... No, he is deceiving people by the thousands, if not even millions, because so many follow this man and they love him. But what they don't see is that he is not preaching about the God of Scripture. He is not preaching about the Jesus of Scripture. And and, and please don't be shocked like, well, then what Jesus is he talking about? Listen, Muslims have a Jesus. Jehovah Witnesses have a Jesus. Mormons have a Jesus. Catholics have a Jesus. Protestants have a Jesus. And who knows how many other religions have a Jesus. What Jesus is Stephen Furtick preaching? But let me tell you, it's not the Jesus of Scripture. The Corinth church had the same issue and Paul called them out on it in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 2 through 5. So what's going on here? Listen, this is what Stephen Furtick, your dear preacher that you love so much, this is what he thinks of God and I quote, God is energy, end quote. Really? He says that? He believes that? Well, what do you expect when this guy hangs out with a bunch of false teachers in 2 John chapter 1, verse 10 and 11, warned us to not hang out, to not allow false teachers into our homes. And so how do we allow T.D. Jakes and Benny Hinn and Stephen Furtick into our homes? Well, you allow him through TV, through the internet, through social media. And if you agree with them, the Bible gives you that warning that you too will share his consequences. You too will share his punishment. If you're following a false teacher and you approve of the false teacher, even though you've been warned not to and of their, 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 their lies and heresy, you too, my friend, will also participate of their punishment because you don't know the God of Scripture. If you knew the God of the Bible, you wouldn't be following this man and considering Stephen Furtick to be an actual man of God. Stephen Furtick teaches that you too are God. In one of his sermons, and I quote, he says, my maker is my mirror, end quote. If God gave me this situation to overcome, I wonder what God knows about me that I don't know about me. My maker is my mirror. If he put it in front of me, he already knows how it's going to fall. Back up, Goliath. I got a rock and a slingshot. My maker is my mirror. And this comes from a teaching where he tries to tell people that when God was telling Moses to tell the, pe the people of Israel in Egypt to tell them that the I am sent him. What God was really trying to tell Moses was the I am is standing right in front of you guys. When God said I am to Moses, you know, my name is I am. He was trying to get him to see you are as I am. That comes from preachers like Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Hagen. It comes from preachers like Joyce Myers, who he says is the greatest Bible teacher ever or the greatest Bible teachers of today. If she was the greatest Bible teacher, then she would not be a pastor. And now that's a totally different video. But listen, in order for you to be a pastor, one of the requirements is to be a man. And I figured Stephen Furtick would know that. The Bible is very clear in the qualifications of an overseer, of a bishop, of a pastor in 1 Timothy chapter 3, 1 through 7, in Titus chapter 1, 7 and on, uh, in, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 10, 11, and 12. The Bible is clear on the role of a pastor. And yet Stephen Furtick goes on and says that Joyce Meyer is the greatest Bible teacher of today. Really, Stephen? 
And this is the guy that you guys love so much and defend so much? Listen, if you're going against the Bible already, you're going against the God of Scripture. You're going against the God that inspired this. And you can't tell me you love God, you love Jesus. Oh my goodness, he's my Lord, my Savior. But you're going against this word because you're putting yourself alongside with Stephen Furtick and you consider him to be a man of God. You, he is deceiving you. He has hypnotized you and you don't even know it, but he's also dragging you straight to hell with him. Wake up. Listen, listen the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 6, no one is like you, Lord. In 1 Chronicles 17, verse 20, there is no one like you, Lord, and there is no God but you. You are not a God. And that is a twisting of scripture of Psalms 82, verse 6. The, the word there that God says that you are God's, uh, that the Hebrew word there is the word Elohim. And because of the context, one of the meanings of that Hebrew word Elohim is judges. In the context, God is talking to the judges of Israel, reminding them, hey, you guys are mere mortals and you will die like mere mortals. He wasn't literally calling them that you're actual gods because then he would contradict scripture and God won't do that. So if you're following Stephen Furtick, please, please stop for him to teach you that you are God. And so deceitful in a deceitful way, he tells you through using the example of Moses. He says this, and I quote, when God said, I am to Moses, you know, my name is I am. He was trying to get him to see you are as I am. End quote. You're not God. God was not telling Moses, you're exactly like who I am. You're, you're like me. No. And these are teachings from Mormonism. These are teachings from uh, uh, religious sects that go against God. God. And this is exactly what Stephen Furtick believes. Another thing that Stephen Furtick believes is, and he teaches, is modalism. If you don't know what modalism is, modalism is the unbiblical idea that there is one God who is only one person. And that when you see the Father, Son, or the Holy Spirit, you're seeing three different manifestations. In other words, these three individuals can never coexist at the same time. So if you see the father and then you see the son, well, he manifested, he transformed. If you see the son and now you see the Holy Spirit, well, there you go. He transformed into the Holy Spirit. That's unbiblical. That's her heresy. The Bible teaches a triune God that can coexist at the same time. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the Father. But they are one, one God. Stephen Furtick said this, and I quote, Jesus, how could you say it is good if you go away? We followed you. We trusted you. And now you're leaving us. No, I am not leaving you. I am changing forms. See, up until now, I have walked with you. But when I send my spirit, I will be in you. So I am not leaving you. I'm just changing locations. And this is what he gets from John 16, verse 7, when Jesus said, It is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. End quote. That's what Jesus says. And Stephen Furtick says, well, Jesus is leaving because he's actually going to change forms. He's going to transform into a different. And now instead of him walking with us, now he's going to be in us. No, sir. It goes against scripture. Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. And now the Holy Spirit is the one that is here with us. They, are, they coexist at the same time. And one of the best examples is when Jesus is at, uh, he's getting baptized. We have, the God, we have God the Father speaking. The Holy Spirit comes down as a dove. And Jesus the Son getting baptized. Bam. But he gets this because his mentor, T.D. Jakes, which is a long, well, very well-known heretic, that's what he teaches. And Stephen Furtick looks up to this man. If you're following Stephen Furtick, please stop. Another thing that he said back in 2021, he posted this on Facebook, and I got a lot of backlash for commenting on this post. He says this, and I quote, Following Jesus doesn't change you into something else. It reveals who you've been 
all along. That goes against scripture. It goes against the Bible. How do we know this? 2 Corinthians 5, 17, one of the most famous and well-known passages, which says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone. Number two, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We might become, not we might be revealed to be the righteousness of God. In 2 Corinthians 3.18, it says, And we all who with unveiled faces complete the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory, which comes from the from the Lord, who is the Spirit. In Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Oh, Stephen Furtick says, no, 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 no. Following Jesus, it just reveals who you've been all along. And yet the Bible says, no, you're going to be transformed. Another belief, or not another belief, I'm sorry, another teaching that Stephen Furtick uh, believes and has preached and many people came to his defense was when Stephen Furtick says that God broke the law for love. If you follow Stephen Furtick and you believe this stupidity, you need to read Galatians. You need to read James. You need to read the Bible and stop following Stephen Furtick. Listen, if Jesus broke the law, if God broke the law, that would make him a sinner. That's the whole point. If you broke the law, that's the whole point of the law. The law was to show us our sinfulness because none of us could ever fulfill the law. And it shows us the holiness and holiness and holiness of God. And so for this man to say that God broke the law is to say that God is a sinner. That Jesus is a sinner. Jesus was not a sinner. He would not, if he was a sinner, then he would have never been the perfect lamb, the perfect spotless lamb of God that appeased God's wrath. Come on, people, wake up. But this is what happens when you allow a crafty and sneaky person like Stephen Furtick, allow him up there on that pulpit to start spewing his false teachings and, and, and you actually came to his defense god didn't break the law well he broke this law he broke this law <sighs> understand that between the old testament and the new testament there was a period of 400 years of silence where god did not speak to his people of israel the way he normally spoke spoke through prophets and so in those 400 years of silence different religious sects uh, uh were, were, were came they were born and so by the time that jesus came these religious sects came up with their own laws and they put their laws above god's laws and so when jesus broke any laws like he helped he healed a person on the sabbath he did this he did that he was breaking man's laws not god's laws come on people jesus would Sin? Jesus would really sin? If, if that was the case, then justice was never made. Dying on the cross, it was pointless then. And that means that you and I cannot have an intimate relationship with God yet. You don't like that, do you? But that's the truth. If Jesus was a sinner because he broke the law, then Jesus was a sinner. And because of that, then guess what? We have no grace. And this is the man that you guys want to follow? That claim that he's such a man of God? Really? And my last point that I'll make in this video is Stephen Furtick believes and teaches and has taught his people and the people seem to believe him is that Jesus is limited by our faith. God is limited by our faith. This is nothing new. It's not new. This is something that Benny Hinn teaches. This is something that Joyce Myers teaches. This is something that Miles Monroe taught when he was alive. That God could not do absolutely nothing without our permission, without us pray without us having faith without us believing and this is exactly what verdict teaches that jesus his power is limited by our faith jesus can't do absolutely nothing if we don't have faith you remember john chapter 5 do you there's this man by the well and jesus goes up to him and says hey what's going on with you man so the guy gives the explanation to jesus jesus has compassion and mercy and heals him the man gets up He's rejoicing. He's happy. He goes on and he, they tell him, hey, who did this to you? I mean, I don't know the guy. This is the guy that was by the well. He's now walking. He goes, I, I, don't, I don't know the guy, but all I know is that he healed me. Jesus healed this man. This man did not know Jesus, much less have faith in Jesus. And yet he was still healed. 
Come on! Where does Stephen Furtick get this? He gets this from Matthew 13, verses 53 through 58. When Jesus was in his hometown, the Bible says and he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. Listen to what it says. And he did not do many miracles because of their lack of faith. And so Stephen Furtick's interpretation of this is that Jesus is limited by our or because of the lack of faith. That's what he got from there. Listen. It's not that Jesus can't do something because if the God that you serve, if the God that Stephen serves is limited and he cannot do something because we don't believe that that God is not worth a dime. That God is not worth worshiping because the God of scripture, the God that I believe in, the God that, that inspired this Bible can do absolutely anything anything he wants because he is sovereign because he is almighty because he is the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end the first and the last and no one can tell god ah oh, no you can't do that jesus chose not to heal not to do many mighty signs he chose not that he could not do it because of them he chose to not do it because of their lack of faith he chose to do you remember when Saul was on the horse that God asked Saul, hey, can I knock you off your horse? But these are the teachings that Stephen Furtick teaches. Let me quote this last quote. The power of God, the power of God was in Jesus. The healing power of God, the restoring power of God, the same power that made demons flee was in Nazareth, but Jesus could not release it because it was trapped in their unbelief. And there's one thing that even Jesus can't do, one thing that even the Son of God can't do. Even Jesus cannot override your unbelief. Do you see the nonsense? Do you see the heresy? Do you see the danger? This man is a wolf in shepherd's clothing and is deceiving thousands upon thousands. But you will come to his aid, even though he's going against Scripture and associating himself with false teachers who he claims they are men and women of God. Please stop following this man. Mark and avoid Stephen Furtick.